G'day and welcome to Hogs, Cogs and Two Aussie Flogs, the greatest podcast this side of Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock? Yes. That's very poignant, mate. Why is that? Well, because we have a big show tonight and tonight we're going to be discussing mm-hmm. one of my favourite subjects, mate. <laughs> Planning and preparation. How to plan and prepare for that big trip. And that's going to be coming a good step for us, mate, because in uh, about four weeks... We're going off on another big one, mate. The I believe it. I bought the planning. Speaking of planning and preparation, Cannonball Run Two, September twenty twenty four, mate. We are off to the outback. Okay. Yep. And you've done, oh, all, mate. You've, you've done all this planning. Yeah, of course I have, mate. We've got day one. Yep. So where we go? Melbourne to Mildura. It's got the route. I've got the map. Yep. And then we move into day two, yep. and so on and so forth. Where we're staying, everything. What do you reckon? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> we're going. We're going now. Don't be stupid. No, we're going now. Four weeks, mate. We're September. going now. What do you mean we're going? We're going now. You know what? I, I can't all, go now, all, mate. All this planning and preparation bullshit. I'm over it. <laughs> I don't plan nothing. This is. Fly by the seat of your pants, we're going. We're hitting the outback right now. One little thing standing in the way, mate. What's that? Well, I have sort of like a wife at home. I, that's, I, already, that's already been taken care of. Have a look at the last video on your phone. What are you talking about? Have a look at the last video on your phone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand where you're coming from, mate. Well, have a look at the last video on your phone. Oh, hold on. Paul, he told me all about it, so have a great trip, and I'll see you when A great start, mate. I'm riding with you. <laughs> perfect weather all week, absolutely perfect. Let's go for a spontaneous bloody week away. <laughs> Fair dinkum. What do you do? Great day for it. Just coming into Cotton, gonna get some breakfast at the uh, Cotton Bakery here. Tell you what, it's been perfect all week. <laughs> and because we decided to go, it's turned to shit. All right, mate. So, uh, no planning. No, no. Yeah. So well, there was lots of planning. <laughs> it's all over your bloody uh, studio floor. What do you mean there was no planning? Now it's just memories. <laughs> Tell you what, you and my wife have got some things to explain. But hey, you know, as always, you bring me out on a beautiful, sunny, warm. Freaking fair dinkum. It's like riding with someone who's got the polar ice caps attached to their ass. Now, I'm not kidding you here. We, all week has been like like low 20s, blue sky, blue sky. As soon as I said, right, we're going, it was like Armageddon came. Like, you, you should see the radar. Like It is like moving where we're going. It's absolutely atrocious. <laughs> the radar turned itself off. It was that scary. It was ridiculous. But, but I, guess, I guess why we're doing this is because... We, 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 basically what we're doing is we're, we're trying to show you don't have to, you can just go. You, don't, you don't have to over plan, but yeah. geez, some. <laughs> I, 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 you know, 
I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone because I tend to plan things to the nth degree. So uh, this should be interesting. So Paul's leading this ride, and uh, I'm just praying to God we'll get out a room for the night. Actually, that's something I've got to look at because I haven't booked anything. Your father plays dominoes, better than my father plays dominoes. It's a religious experience this ride, mate. It is, isn't it? Hey, how good is it? It's a little bit wet. Well, we're being baptised over and over and over again. Again and again and again. <laughs> mate, you promised me that once we got over the Great Divide, the oh. sun would come out, the, the warmth would happen, the jumpers you, could come off. Can you believe it? It's just shit. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you can believe it. I can believe it. 100% <laughs> I can bloody believe it. But we're in beautiful Wedderburn. If you haven't been to Wedderburn, it's got some really great uh, like street art and stuff. There's that's mm. the church there behind us, as you can see. And just across there, if you have a look at that wall there, there's some lovely little birdies. How cool is that? We're heading up to uh, well, eventually the, the plans to head to um, Silverton, to, to, to Silverton and Broken Hill, um, which is why you've never been to the outback. So we said we've we'll, got to go to the outback. We've got to try and get out the outback. So. Hopefully it's friggin' rain stops. Meticulously plan this trip <laughs> for warm September. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> but what do you do? We're, <laughs> we're both uh, nice oh. and wet, but anyway. It's only a bit of water, mate. Won't hurt us. Oh, look. You know, at the end of the day, it was a spontaneous trip. Bang, we're off. We're going. And we'll make the most of it no matter what, yeah? I've got somewhere to sleep tonight, so we're happy. I'm happy till tomorrow. <laughs> Let's go. I just noticed it then. I just noticed it then. Just noticed that Whitey's patio was open and his pants have come out. Go back and have a look, see if we can find them. Found them. That was worth coming back and saved me about 80 bucks. <laughs> that was good. I think we only went back about 500 metres. That's the quickest 80 bucks I've ever made. <laughs> yeah, lucky I noticed so we're just going along. I noticed the bag was bumping. I thought, oh shit, his thing's flying open. And then we noticed the bloody uh, the pants were missing. So. That was a good find, got him back, didn't take too much time, and we're off again. The route which improved about 100 k's to go to the Sea Lake for lunch. Uh, that was lucky, Paul, the rear view mirror saw my panty are open, and uh, improved about 100 k's to go to the Sea Lake for lunch. Uh, that was lucky, Paul, the rear view mirror saw my panty are open, and uh, lucky, Paul, the rear view mirror saw my panty are open, so I've just uh, lost the we have a pants, but uh, fuck me. Now we just have Vinci through about, uh, I don't know, 100 k's from Sea Lake to go before we have lunch. Just pulled over after uh, realising my patio was open, all pointed it out. We got back there and found it about a k back, so that's a win. Anyway, I'm going forward. Right, it's another wall. This is where there's some solo art. Check this out.
So, they're pretty impressive, these bloody things, aren't they? They're not bad, mate. I, uh, a little bit more skill than me for uh, <laughs> art. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, it's, it's, it's brought people back to the countryside to have a look at these things, and they're all over Victoria, so if you haven't had a look at them yet, go and have a look at the uh, Silo Art Trail uh, on the inter interwebby thing. Yep. And, uh, the route has been calculated. <laughs> it's always good when your next route's calculated, mate. <laughs> But I guess the whole purpose of this whole exercise that we're doing for you is to, you know, the thing is, mate, I think pe yeah, people have excuses of why they can't go. Yeah, it's easier to find an excuse. Yeah. A lot easier than finding a reason to actually go and do it, mate. Yeah. So sometimes, and don't you think you've just got to go? Well, mate, your channel has got the, uh, the saying, uh, get off the couch. Yep. Mine's got life is not a rehearsal. And that's what this is all about. It's all about, you know what? You can make all the excuses in the world. Guess what? The day you drop dead, your job will be advertised, mate. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Forget about work. You hit work's there to make your life better, not the other way around. Yeah, and, and look, you can't use the excuse, oh, you know, but yeah, but yeah, it's okay for you, but you work during the week. Hey, hey I work during the week as well. What, he's lucky enough that he retired, but you know what? He's still went on holidays and lots of the stuff when he was working. Yeah. And so, you know, you don't have to take a whole month off. You can do it like, we're, we're doing this in a weekend. You just got to want to do it. Yeah, you just got to get behind prepared. And talk about preparation, we had no preparation for this. I can tell you, we'll show you a bit later what we've packed. But as you can see, Bugger all. <laughs> there's no tour packs, there's no nothing. There's two panniers and yeah. we've got the, the stuff that we absolutely need. And yeah, at the end of the day, anything else, you just get it if you need it, can't you? You get a credit card, you go and buy yeah. it. You just go buy a pair of jocks, mate. These ones will last four days, though, I reckon. Yeah, well, <laughs> inside out, back to front, you're yeah, laughing. Easy, mate. <laughs> Calculations, yeah. perfect. But, I mean, it's at the end of the day, like Whitey said, life's not a rehearsal. It's all about living. And, you know, I, I'd hate to see any of you flogs out there you know, because a lot, of, you know, a lot of a lot of you say, "Oh, yeah, I wish we could do it," but you can. You can. You can. You, can. you just got to go. You've got the bike already. You just got to go. Yeah. And it's 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 almost like you got to break the umbilical cord and just just say, "Bugger it, I'm Rip going." Rip off the scab, boys. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and girls. Anyway, enough talk. We're getting hungry. It's time to get to uh, where are we going. Sea Lake. Sea Lake. There's a grouse pub at Sea Lake. Absolutely fantastic crumbland cutlets. I think I might have them. Crumbland cutlets. Fair enough. <laughs> How cool is that? Pretty cool again, eh? Uh, mate, one silo to another silo. <laughs> We're just bopping along the silo route. Little bit of blue sky, how good is that? We've actually punched through. Actually, we, you know what? We've been lucky because we, we thought we were going to get absolutely yeah, and we held on, didn't we? No, nah, we got a little bit damp, but that's all right. We can live with that. Yep. It was, uh, I think it's like we went through the dark clouds were on the right and on the left, but we went right down the guts. <laughs> it was good. But now we've reached some blue sky, mate. A little bit of, I don't know, do I dare say warmth? Yes, yes. I'll just uh, keep that quiet for now and... Uh, and how good is it to have stops like this and then that's the view you get? Yeah. That just looks so cool, I reckon, doesn't it? It's just... <laughs> they do a pretty good job of it. <laughs> cool. They do a good job of it. All right, let's go get some lunch, eh? Sounds good. Okay, fed, fueled up. Let's go have a look at Lake Tyrrell. Right, into the next street in 300 metres onto Lake Tyrrell Road. It's highly likely that Paul's taken all this... Uh woke conversation that we had last week way too far because uh, right at the moment no, he's uh, turn taking, sharp right. because right at the moment he's taking me into believe it or not Lake Tyrrell and Lake Tyrrell's other Brutal name calculation. 
and like Tyrrell's other Please name, follow the road for 5.5 kilometers. Fucking keep you mad! Right. Seems Paul might have taken the boat conversation from last week a little bit too far because uh, he's now leading me to Lake Tyrrell and its other name is The Pink Lake. So uh, I think we're going to have to have a bit of a chat. Maybe he's got somebody he needs to tell us. Yeah, the pink lake, mate. That's not a bad route to get here. You're taking way too much this wake thing way too far. <laughs> all right. It is, in fact, I can certify that it is, in fact, pink. Yes. I thought it was your sort of match your eye shades. I like. <laughs> no, this is a lovely place. I love its pink bits. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of uh, lakes. Pink. Yeah, and. Well, there's a big lake between us and Tasmania. Yes, that'd be called Bass Strait. That's the one. Yes. All right. But over there, I think Annie needs something desperately. Don't tell me she needs a root. Over to you, Annie and Bert. Greetings, flogs and flogettes. And now for everybody's favourite section of the show. Continuing on from Big Bert's ride uh, last episode from Swansea to Scottsdale. Today we're going to ride from Scottsdale to Launceston. Leaving Scottsdale on King Street, which is also the Tasman Highway A3, King Street will be the only straight bit of road you'll get on this ride. And now we're heading over the sidling to Launceston. The road is lined with tree ferns, plantations, and the occasional steep drop-off, so take care. After about 30, uh, 20 kilometres um, of this, you'll need a break. Sidling Lookout is on your left. A huge flat car park, perfect if you're leading a group. There's a lookout platform with binoculars, clean toilets, and a sheltered rotunda. So we had a quick stop at the sidling lookout. It's a bit clear day. Get to check that out. From here, from the lookout, you can see Scottsdale. And if you look to the north, if it's a clear day, and it probably is, if you're out riding, you can see the Flinders Island group of islands in Bass Strait. Back on the bike, turn left onto the road to Launceston. More great riding.
more great riding as you come down into Tiger Territory. Not Tiger Territory, although I do believe we have them in Tassie, and not Targa Tasmania, the famous road rally event held every year, just not this year. Targa is a small farming community, population less than 40. It's more a bend in the road. Um, there is camping available there on Myrtle Creek. You continue on to Launceston, which is only another half hour. You may well meet up with Big Bert for a bevy. The whole ride from Scottsdale to Launceston is 60k plus. It is Tasmania, so you will need to allow one hour plus the stop at Sidling Lookout for this piece of motorcycling magic. Some of the best we have to offer in Tasmania. If you're from the mainland, book yourself onto the Spirit and come on over. Thanks guys, fantastic. Well, that's the Pink Lake. I mean, how good is that? That's just such a good spot and that what Bert and Eddie did then, that was fantastic as well. Again, so we're headed from here, now we'll head up towards Mildura. That's where we'll stop for the night. And then tomorrow, head up the uh, up to Broken Hill, Silverton, which should be fun because it's the Monday Monday Festival. There's about 8,000 caravans heading there that we didn't know about. So it'll be interesting. Anyway, let's keep going. So, uh, better good luck number two, Paul. Yes. We'll show them what happened, mate. That's my GoPro, it snapped. It fell off, that's where it's mounted there, you can see it. And as it's fallen off, I've just caught it like that. <laughs> <laughs> what a catch, what a catch. <laughs> all the grapevines up here shortly because it is a massive massive grape area then we'll mosey i've got to go to jb hi-fi first and get another bloody uh clamp for this gopro because it broke it's been a bloody good day really really good just another reason you know what we keep saying you've got to keep getting off the couch guys because you know life's short like i said grapevines everywhere GoPro repaired. That's it, mate. We've, uh, day one's riding done and dusted. Day one is done. Lovely sunny Mildura. Look at the sky here. That's a bloody big change from what we were in <laughs> earlier this morning, mate. I was running around his own weather pattern, uh, and it doesn't happen. It's not a summer weather pattern either. I'm giving you the drill. <laughs> so, uh, but before we give you a look at what we've brought along on this, uh, trip. Now, uh, this is for four days, right? Now, Obviously, yeah. he didn't know he was going for four days, so he had, so, but we've chucked a little bit extra in because <laughs> I didn't want to smell him after four I, I, days. I'm a little bit concerned that Paul's tidy whities aren't going to fit, but <laughs> we'll give it a crack. But this is what we've. This is what. This is all you need to pack for four days, yeah. right? Oh, what have I got here? Let's have a look. Oh, very nice, spotty. Got a hot. Got an iPad. Yep. Got me shirt. Yep. Pair of jeans. Yep. Spare pair of jeans. Uh, that's GoPro stuff. Two t-shirts, and this one's a, a roll, a uh, pair of socks, t-shirt, and jocks. Beautiful. Uh, I'll teach you how to roll those one day. <laughs> They're very cool. Now, for me, that's it. I think I'm even lighter. So I've got one spare pair of jeans, one t-shirt, jocks. Always take, so there's three pair of jocks there, and a jocks on, jocks on today, three extras. I've got my flip-flops, a pair of shorts, that's it. And tracky deck. That's all I've got. That's that's all. Uh, that's all you need. Um, hey, we're not going. We're not going to the freaking Hilton bloody ball or going to see the Royal Command performance here. <laughs> we're riding. It's all about riding. What you got to remember is, anywhere you're going, you're going on the motorbike. So it's not like you need a, a like dress up stuff because no. you really can't wear it. So 
Um, pack as light as you can. That is literally, we've got two panniers, two and that's panniers. it. I've got one pannier with me clothes and my iPad. Yep. And the rest, and is, the camera. rest is camera equipment. So if you know if you're not if, you know, if you're not carrying camera, camera equipment, you've you got, you got two panniers. So we, we just got one pannier for for our clothes. So that's right. that's all we need. Now if you want to gear up and you want to take a bit extra, well, you got an extra pannier. But guys, pack light. I've done it now for a long, 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 long time. I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah. And uh, you just don't need it, do you? Nah. Nah. You don't need it. Nah. Uh, you know, obviously, I've got a wind cheater, which I will. We've got our jackets. Yeah. Uh, boots. Like I said, flip flops. I think Wally's got a pair of runners. I have. Yeah, I didn't even bring. I didn't even bring runners. I thought, figured, you know, I just keep my boots on to be fine. That's it, guys. Day one done. And dusted. And dusted. Off to Broken Hill, Silverton tomorrow. Be a be a big day. Reaper day. It's supposed to be eight thousand caravans up. I there. still don't believe you saw a gate. <laughs> Day two on the road, mate. We uh, up nice and early, mate. Yep. Another great night's half sleep, <laughs> and uh, we're off to the outback, the Is real it? outback. Yep. Looking forward to that, mate. We are off. So we've got about three hundred odd k's to go to get to um, to get to Broken Hill. There's last time I went there, there was no fuel between here and Broken Hill, so we should be just on the our limit when we get there. Um, so that's a tip for young players. If you're going to go there, if you haven't got a tank big enough to get you to 300 k's, take a bit extra with you. Um, there is a roadhouse halfway, but last time I was here, it was closed. And what I've heard since it's closed most of the time. So, uh, got to get all the way there. Once we get there, we'll have a good look around. But uh, beautiful day. A bit chilly, but... Don't worry about a bit of chill, mate. <laughs> Got my heated vest, my heated seat, my heated gloves. Oh, you haven't, have you? <laughs> Soft. Over the border we go. So, day two, as Paul just said, we're uh, heading towards Broken Hill. We're uh, on the Silver City Highway, just out of Dildura now, absolutely cracking day. We, I mean, we couldn't have expected anything like this. It was uh, forecast to be cold and miserable this morning, but uh, Mildura normally delivers. So about three hours, should get into Broken Hill, drop our stuff at the hotel, and then we'll be uh, heading off to Silverton to have a look at what they've got to see around there. That should be some real outbacking type stuff. We might be just skirting the real outback, but you know what? For a weekend away, you can't get any better than this. Just stopped at G Coomba truck stop to get some fuel. It's bloody cheap. <laughs> Only problem is it hasn't been open for two freaking years or three years. Uh, what have we got? 120 k's, 130 k's to go to Broken what's Hill. The name? And and I was thinking along the way, mate. One of the reasons we're on this ride is. Uh, not only to show that we can just, you know, you can get on your bike and you can just go, but uh, there are some important factors that you do have to take into consideration, mate. For a start, who you go with. Yep. All right. If you're lucky enough, like we are, to have someone who you can just jump on a bike and go riding with, makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? It does, it does. All right. And, uh, a lot of the time you're lost in your own head though because you're, you're riding along. We don't have any comms out here. We've been using, um, what's it called? Uh, Discord. Yeah, okay, so uh, 
because we've both got different headsets, I've got a center, he's got cardio, because uh, we're just that different. Uh, <laughs> we've actually been using what, what the gamers use, and it's called Discord. And uh, it's, it's not been bad for communicating, except for one thing, mate. You need, re you need reception. Yeah, reception helps. <laughs> you need to have Wi-Fi, and there ain't none out here in, B <laughs> in Coomba, in BF nowhere. Yep. So, uh, so a lot of the time, you, you end up just thinking your to yourself, thoughts. mate, and it, it, it's amazing, isn't it? And of course, it does help if you've got a, a mate to share it with, because we, we, we have very in-depth conversations, don't we, mate? Like, what next are we putting on the bike? <laughs> and, what and, are we eating? And, what are we eating? What are we eating? What are we going to have to drink? Uh, very important conversation, but it's uh, it's important. Get on, get on the bike, hopefully with a mate, go for a run. I mean, how much fun have we had today? By the way, this is to Adam. Adam, mate, you think you ought to go. Yeah. <laughs> how many goats have we seen today, mate? Holy I reckon crap. minimum, minimum 800. Oh, shit, easy. Maybe a thousand. Yeah, fair, easy. I mean, it's, easy. And I'd never seen that, a wild goat before this morning. And they're just the ones on the side of the road. I mean, yeah. you, when you look into the paddocks, there's just thousands hey, of the bastards. How is there any famine in the world, mate? We just start, if we if everyone just ate goat, yeah, well, there'd, there'd be uh, well, I think, I think Shazza. Ate <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a sick man. <laughs> so as we depart this oasis, uh, just further on from that conversation. I know a lot of you blokes out there are probably going, geez, wouldn't it be nice to have a, a mate like that that I could go riding with? And, you know, there's plenty out there, guys. If you haven't got that good mate that you can go and do these sorts of things with, get yourself along to a uh, social bike club, get yourself along to uh, one of our flog events. There's plenty of people out there that are willing to. They don't care what you do for a job, they don't care what you do, you know, any other time. They just have that love of riding as well, and uh, you can find them. So, don't sit at home thinking, oh, well, I've got no one to go with. Get out there and find someone to go with, trust me. You're just going to take that leap of faith. There's plenty of people that have in our uh, social group now, and I've got to tell you, they're all the happier for it. Mate, well, what better place to have some biking news? Eh? Huh? Well, mate, it's been a it's been a big week in biking news world. Yep. And uh, okay, so first of all, last week we talked a lot about the blessing of the bikes and the demise of the blessing of the bikes. Well, it's been a religious experience, my friend. <laughs> there has been a rising because a resurrection. A resurrection. Well, we're hoping a resurrection because it looks like the blessing of the bikes has moved on to another party. Someone else has bought the rights. Uh, apparently, there was four groups lining up, and a group has bought it. And I can't say who it is just yet, but there's about uh, in two weeks they're going to be announcing that, I believe. So. Hopefully on the next show, mate, we'll, uh, we'll yep. know who is the new owners of Blessing of the Bikes. Uh, can't guarantee that there'll be one this year, mate, because it's now... Yeah, what? it might be getting a bit close. Yeah, a bit close, and they, it's a whole lot of sh shit to organise, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's it. So that's Blessing of the Bikes. Hopefully, at least next year... Fingers we'll crossed. Be, fingers crossed we'll be back on the calendar. Good stuff. Okay, and in relation to my grumble last week about the uh, bullfeted comment on the Brimbank iWatch page. Yep, yep. Well, I uh, sent a little letter off to the Chief and said, uh, Mr. Chief Commissioner, sir, why is your bloke <laughs> such a prat? And uh, funnily enough, a couple of days later, uh, said Pratt's boss rang me and we had a chat. Yep. And uh, he was very, he was actually really good. So he was the, the uh, senior sergeant in charge of the Brimbank Highway Patrol, yep. gave me a call. I guess Neil was his name. Yep. And uh, uh, safe to say, said Pratt won't be 
writing that sort of crap again. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, look, so we, a week. We, we didn't want him crucified, but we certainly wanted him to understand that the angst that that sort of rubbish causes, because one of the things we're trying to do here on Hogs Cogs is uh, sort of breach that gap a little yeah. bit, you know. Let's... Uh, Let's not go out there as adversaries with the with the police. Let's work with them because they're going to be able to hopefully, if you know, we can try and get them on our, on our try side. Try getting them on our side. It's, yeah. it's always better to work with people than work against people. Hundred percent. And uh, you know, with the amount of fatals lately, that's one thing we're doing. We're researching. We're talking about the amount of fatals lately. There's been four, well, four serious accidents. Three fatals and one. Uh, or one one of our own flogs got yeah. got got killed unfortunately that was yeah. that was even yeah, yeah. not not too far back Pete yep. Pete's life yep and uh, look look out of those four uh, it appears that three of them were caused by drivers pulling out in front so but I have been looking at the stats mate and the stats are horrendous for Victoria this year 42 yep. killed on bikes and there's still way too many blokes. Uh, or, or people crashing on the box. So it's not just blokes because we have had girls yep. killed as well um, in single vehicle accidents. Now, the problem with the stats is I can't tell how many of those were caused by road defects, which I wouldn't be surprised that some of them were, yep. and some that weren't. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, 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 quite a number of them though are people overcooking it in the corners. Yep. And if it's a single vehicle and an accident on a corner, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes. You don't have to wear that uniform that they're wearing to yep. tell us that uh, people. some people are pushing it too hard. And you know what? It's better to come home in second place from your mates <laughs> than to not come home at all. <laughs> exactly, eh? exactly. Anyway. But we'll keep, we'll keep delving into yeah, those we'll stats. Yeah, we'll keep delving into those stats and see if we can't get something out of it, mate. And uh, apart from that... What a spot to have bike and use. We have made it to <laughs> Silverton. Uh, uh, well, this is going to be pretty much our northernest point on the trip, isn't yep, it? Yep, yep. About a thousand k's we've done, mate, yes. from my place, yep. and uh, I reckon it's been a bloody ripper trip so far. So far, it's been fantastic. Oh well, but there's only one thing we need to do, mate. Go get lunch. I'm starving. Let's go. <laughs> well, here we are, mate. The famous Silverton Hotel, and it is pretty fucking busy today. Let me tell you, because of the mate. Monday Monday Festival. Oh. I've never been to the Davis Centre this before. Well. Uh, they're all here for the flogs, obviously. <laughs> what can I say? We're just uh, clearly that famous. <laughs> Can't believe they've, they've put all this on for us. That was very nice of them, mate. <laughs> I'm in my happy place. <laughs> we are here at the Silverson pub and uh, in a rating of one to oh my god, this is oh my god plus. Very happy mate, very cool place. But it's not only got this, we well, can't call it a beer garden because it's a beer dirt patch. <laughs> but it's very cool and everybody's having a really good time and then over there you've got the, the underground beer drinking eating area. Yep. Oh, it's just such a cool place mate. Yep. 
Eh? No, it's cool as buggery. Uh, I, I, I tell you what, it's a good weekend to come because as you said, normally it's you know half a dozen people and yeah. now lost mule. But uh, <laughs> today it's absolutely chockers, and that's all right. That's a good thing. And it says over there, you don't feed the donkeys, so it looks like I'm going hungry. Oh well, it's the price you pay. <laughs> well, donkey stud, same thing, mate. <laughs> Hey, how cool is this place, though? Mate, it's oh, gross. Have a look at this. Mate. It's just such a cool setup, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what are we? Less, uh, just that much less than a, a, col a thousand k's from home. Yep. So an easy two days ride. Yeah, easy, easy. It's easy. Yesterday was a bit longer, obviously. We did about 6.50 yesterday, and we've only done about 300 today. So yeah, it's nothing. So it's been easy, but... But today, yesterday we spent the whole day dodging potholes, yep. and today we spent the whole day, well, I can't say we were dodging goats, <laughs> because they're, they're actually smart. I think I only saw one one dead goat. Well, at least they run away from the road. The that's kangaroos it. tend to go across the road. That's exactly right, and that's why I saw a lot more dead kangaroos. In fact, I don't think I saw a live kangaroo. No, we didn't see a live kangaroo. Yep. No, we did not. Lots of lots of dead ones. Kangaroos plenty, are dumb. Plenty of emus. For our for our uh, international viewers, <laughs> can, kangaroos are about as thick as two short planks. Yep. Aren't they? Yep. <laughs> but the goats, the goats are cool. Yep. And emus, emus. E emus were all right. We saw about I don't know four or five of those. Yep. Yep. So uh, I was I was surprised to see one so close to Broken Hill. Yeah, I know. Because the goats stopped about 50 k's out. Yeah, they're well, smart, see? They? Well, that's it. Either that or the people from Broken Hill are too lazy to uh, go more than 50 k's to get their dinner. Exactly. <laughs> Lunch done and dusted. I reckon I should be able to sleep for about 14 hours tonight. <laughs> that was a wicked hamburger. That was a big burger. That was a big burger. Very nice. And what an iconic spot to have it at, eh? Oh, it's ripper, mate, eh? Well worth the trip just to come uh, and see this place. I was saying before, I think a lot of people think this is further than what it is. Nah. It's only 25 k's from Broken Hill. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, from Melbourne it's a fair, fair hike, but yeah. it's not... It's, it's, Two days ride. Yeah, well, easily easy doable. Days. Easily doable. And it's not hard, yeah, not hard days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. you, don't, you don't have to go all the way to Mildew if you don't want to get stop it. You know, Sea Lake or whatever, you can just do it yeah. shorter if you want to. Yeah. But, um, but it made today's ride really easy, easy. didn't it? And a whole lot of fun because we had that time to stop and have a look at all the, you know, the goats and the emu and the <laughs> kidna and that's fair to mate. There's more wildlife than Melbourne Zoo. <laughs> Unbelievable. But none of them were on the road apart from the dead, dump, dopey kangaroos. No. So it was well, good. I just think they should get a better place to sleep. The kangaroos? Yeah. I've got some bad news for you. What? They weren't sleeping. So uh, Paul's nicked off to the bloody uh, Mad Max Museum, but he doesn't have rearview mirrors obviously because he's uh, left me with a flat battery for some reason. I think Paul left my ignition on quite frankly, but I've uh, luckily enough one of the bike park next to me had a jump starter. Thanks mate. Much appreciated. I ain't no trouble at all. <laughs> hey, there's nothing worse than being caught out by a BMW rider. <laughs> Wouldn't happen with that good German stuff. <laughs> just be sure. And he never came back. Son of a bitch, we have fixed everything. We pulled the bike apart and Paul is still nowhere to be seen. Absolutely nowhere to be seen. So much about that conversation we had about mates. <laughs> Thanks brother. Appreciate it. There's Paul putting up the drone. Totally oblivious to what's been happening on with us.